Welcome to the fifth video on teaching in a synchronous environment. In the last video, we covered the following. In this video, we'll cover collaborative and social learning with a focus on netiquette and online communication. Social and collaborative learning has been shown to increase accountability to other learners, lead to lifelong learning outside the classroom, and increase understanding of complex and nuanced learning. For example, a learner could memorize all of Harrison's textbook for internal medicine, but they wouldn't be a good clinician unless they learn the nuances, art, and practical application of medicine. This is where learning with peers, mentors, supervisors, trainees, and patients is essential. Research shows that complex information is better learned in a group than individually, showing that two heads are indeed better than one. Through narrative experiences and personal clinical questions, we all learn important lessons. Computer-supported collaborative learning is therefore essential to meaningful learning. But how do we do this in a synchronous environment? First, you'll need to establish netiquette. We have all learned socially acceptable or not acceptable ways to learn in a classroom setting from an early age. But online, the rules are not so clearly established. Therefore, it's best practice to discuss these with your group. If you're meeting for only one to two sessions, it may be best to set out these rules at the beginning of your teaching. If you're teaching a small group over multiple sessions, it's worth your time to have a brief discussion and or vote on group netiquette. Consider sending an email with the suggested requirements of the session, such as a webcam, headset, and time to participate in the session, and request learners to contact you if they need to make alternative arrangements for participating in the sessions. Please refer to the checklist associated with this video for a list of netiquette considerations. We don't have time to discuss each of these here. However, let's discuss video usage as an example. The pros of having videos on during a teaching session are increased social learning, teacher feedback, such as learner expressions and engagement, increased learner focus with less temptation to multitask, dual channel learning, which uses complementary audio and visual inputs together to increase learning effectiveness, increased accessibility for hearing impaired individuals who may rely on lip reading or other visual cues. The cons are inability to multitask, for example, during less relevant parts of the lecture to the learner or needing to provide childcare, increased tech glitches due to increased bandwidth needs, particularly in remote communities, Zoom fatigue from trying to always be present and interpret small non-verbal cues when your webcam is on, need for a webcam, hospital computers may not have these due to patient privacy issues, and social inequity and privacy issues, such as lack of a webcam, limited bandwidth, and not being able to share video or audio of their home environment. In this example, the learning would be more effective with video on, but teaching Teachers also need to be mindful of learner limitations as well. Although there is no right answer, by making explicit the reasons why video usage makes for a better learning experience and allowing learners to have a say in group video norms, learners are more likely to agree to using their videos. It's also important to give learners choices, such as sharing video for 50 to 75 percent of the session or contacting the teacher before the session about other ways in which they can interact with the group. Consider checking with your institution for policies around accessibility, inclusivity, privacy, and copyright in synchronous environments. That brings us to online synchronous communication. Again, we've all learned how to communicate in a face-to-face -face way from a young age, but online communication is different. Typically, learner groups will establish their own way of communicating even by the end of one session, but getting learners to start talking and without talking over one another is challenging at the start. This is made even more challenging with tech glitches and delays, group dynamics, dynamics, and ethically charged subject matter. You may want to start by using the talking stick method, where learners who are more confident raise their hand from the participant pod to speak and are granted rights one at a time. Another idea is to ask a colleague to be first to speak. Once the group has warmed up and gained confidence through seeing others speak, you can move on to more open communication by opening everyone's mic. Whatever you choose, remember to be explicit in your instructions for communication and normalize with the group that communication online is different 
but that you'll figure it out together. For now, take some time to number one, reflect on what you've learned and write down how you'll incorporate social and collaborative learning, including netiquette and online communication considerations into your sessions. Number two, consider effective teaching principles, review the netiquette checklist, and consider how you'll address communication and engagement in your online sessions together. Consider creative ways and options you can use to create a safe and supportive learning environment for all. Engage help from your local student support services or colleagues where appropriate. Check for any policies at your institution regarding accessibility, inclusivity, privacy, and copyright in online environments. Number three, try out the features of Zoom. Consider alternative means of engagement such as chat, polls, and annotation to hear all the voices of your learners. Promote social and collaborative learning while still being mindful of issues with accessibility and privacy for some learners. Stay tuned for our next video on reflection featuring breakout rooms.